Running around all the time in your mind, but you're not free. I see you want to be grounded, grounded like me. He is the vine, and we are the branches. Understand that this is all about authority. You can't be free. You can overcome. You can Is there free? Let me sing for eternity Without God and His Son, Jesus Everything is peaceful and lightness Happy always doing His will Happy always doing His will Overcome Oh my goodness Here we are at uh, August all in. I tell you what, we clap so much here, it gets it going, doesn't it? I tell you what, it's exciting. Uh, uh, even the microphones are excited. So it's it's just it's excitement everywhere. Well, here we are at season nine, episode seven. Well, it's super exciting because this is all in August. So we've been yes. super excited. Okay, I want to say before we get too far into, we're going to be talking about August All In tonight. So if you're not all in, you'll be, you will be after, after the show's over. Mm -hmm. But we, um, I want you to know that the TV show format, I mean, the TV uh, You Can Overcome show has an additional something exciting coming for everybody so that can be we can jazz it up a little bit more and change it up a little bit more and so watch this and you can figure out what's going to happen This message here is absolute true Christianity and you know it's true Christianity by its fruit. Jesus said a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Running around all the time in your mind but you're not free. Their lives have been blessed by putting God first. Grounded, grounded like My prayer is that we all unite in giving all we've got to God. This is all about authority. It's not about us. It's about the needy, you it's about the hurting, it's about free. God. You can overcome, you can overcome. It's something that everybody can imitate, and it's something that you should imitate because it has borne so much fruit in all of our lives. Without God and His Son, Jesus, everything is peaceful and lightness. Happy always doing His will, happy always doing His will. going on mm -hmm. and, and and tonight is about that also it, it just keeps coming because the parents are passing it down and the youth are here and so the youth can overcome show the youth can overcome show next is Wednesday be, every starts next Wednesday. youth out there you've That's got right. to we have just I mean we are so blessed yes we are so blessed and this is a result of those watching it is a result of families that have found a message that's not legalistic that because it could have gone there it could have gone you can tell by looking at us all that this is not a legalistic message but that this is there's got to be something going on good because God is transforming Amen. everyone's life mm -hmm. and we're all going for it and we want to just encourage everyone to go all in and speaking of all in please join Ted and Candace and I in welcoming Jay and Lacey Doggon. <laughs> Jesus, 
awesome. I mean, we um, we have just got a wealth of people that can come up here and shine for God. But this couple right here, you're going to get to know even more tonight and know why I think so highly of them. But let's just start off with who you are. Okay, uh, Jay, let's let's talk about, like, if you can just tell everybody who you are, your family, and we can maybe show some pictures to place you in this congregation. <laughs> well, honored to be up here. Um, again, my name is Jay Dalgarn. I'm 29. I am the son of Molly Dalgarn, Jay and Molly Dalgarn, and my mom is the daughter of Peggy and Roy Patrick, who uh, joined shortly after my mom, who joined in 2005. Okay, and then, so, and your wife, Lacey, is? Lacey, she's the daughter of Rob and Tiffany Day, who also have Hunter and Allison Day, and Christian and Madison Olivas, and Hartley and Everly, and I actually forgot my sister, Jessica Dalgarn, who uh, joined in 2013. And did he leave anybody out? Probably there's other family members is extended. Yes, uh, my, my dad, Rob Day, uh, his mother, Dixie Day, and George Day, his father, are in the message, as well as um, his sister, Nicole Duncan, who's married to Tony Duncan and their two sons. And then you have Danielle Reeves and her daughter, Mariah Carlisle, and Frank and Donovan. And through the marriages, it extends <laughs> there we go. even more from there. That's some, oh, look, you, I'm a part of your family up there. <laughs> So that's awesome. That is all. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful, everybody? Well, okay, okay. And so y'all been married for five years, and y'all have a daughter uh, named Giselle. We have a picture of beautiful Giselle. Um, yes. And talking about all the blessings, I have inside information and I happen to know that another one is on its way. Woo! Oh my goodness. I mean, it just doesn't stop. I mean, you know, people can go to services all the time, but we're hanging on these announcements. We're hanging on what God is doing. And, and if you stick, stick around after the service, you'll hear a lot more of what God has done. But I mean, I want to just ask both of y'all just to start with, just give your, your brief testimonies and then we're going to go into why you're all in. Because I think the world wants to know, why are we all in? And uh, so, Jay, let's start with you and... Well, I'll start in uh, 2005 when my mom joined, and uh, I just want to say I'm so thankful and grateful for my mother, who was always seeking God's approval, um, searching everywhere, high and low, um, you know, took us to church and knew that that was the answer, um, but wasn't really sure what the answers we were getting from the churches we were going to, um, so I'm, I'm here because of her. Um, but in 2005, I was a junior in high school, and I was deep in sin. I was lustful, I was prideful, I was arrogant, I was lazy, I procrastinated. Um, I was very angry if I didn't get my way, um, very controlling, um, and I was considered a good kid. <laughs> so it was. Uh, now, that is a good kid. I mean, you're not out, you know, m murdering someone or robbing a store. Honestly, the kids nowadays, yeah. it's Bar off the charts how Bar young they start yeah. and how bad they are. But yeah, that would be considered a good kid. But we know that's not heaven bound. Mm -hmm. So, I was, like I said, I was considered a good kid. Considered a good kid. I was also considered a popular kid. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the town that we grew up in, it was Pataskal, Ohio. Our family was, was known as maybe had money, um, had their own business, um, had friends, had, you know, everything that would be sought out of. And still after all that, I was miserable. I uh, had no friends. Um, I was looking in all the wrong places 
to be filled up and, and I was kept you know, being disappointed in everything that I went to and, but would go more to it because I thought it would fill me up. Um, so with that being said, I almost didn't graduate high school. Um, I think it's still a rumor today in my class that I didn't graduate, um, <laughs> but I did. And uh, so then after that, I was like, what do I do? What do I do after high school? Um, go to college. Okay, that's right, we, we go to college. You go to college after high school. Um, so I tried that and I had a lot, I played golf, I had a lot of, you know, High universities contact me and was very interested in me. And I said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be accepted into your university um, because I didn't do what I needed to do in high school. Um, I just wanted to be respectful of their time. Um, so then that landed me at a community college in Toledo, Ohio. They offered a full golf scholarship, played golf with them for a little bit, but my habits followed me up there. And I was still not successful at school. I was still not successful you know, on the golf course and just everything you know, went coasted together. I wasn't taking care of what I needed to do, so I wasn't successful. Um, and my arrogance got me in the ICU room in 2006. I remember waking up there, what just happened? What happened was I was jumped uh, by two guys, and they put my three iron in my right side of my skull, mm. and witnesses thought they killed me. Um, and that's what the, the papers said. But it was really my arrogance that got me into it. I said some words, say they, they said some words, and, uh, and I ended up in the ICU room. Um, so I always felt like God used that to wake me up. He's trying to get my attention. Sure. Um, but again, I wasn't a good listener, just like in school, and uh, I thought I could still figure it out. So I tried to go back to the same school, didn't work out, moved back to Columbus with my parents, and tried the same thing again. Another community college, another golf program, and, but still, I had no answers. I had no idea what I was gonna do with my life, with business, with golf, with anything. Um, at that time, I think I was 21, 22, um, just miserable with my friends, miserable with my relationships that I had with girls. I had no hope in it. I started to lose my hope with it, with ever being married. Um, and then that parlayed with, with kids. I was like, I, I can't imagine having a kid right now with what I'm in. I was like, I, I don't want him to have, or her to have anything to what I'm doing. That's a very typical feeling mm -hmm. of kids in your generation. And I, I don't blame them. I think that that's, that's appropriate with all that's going on if you don't have the answers. And, and I was desperate. I was looking, I, was, I thought I was looking. I was really just filling up at night, you know, with drugs or whatever, or lust or, or whatever, to just get that, you know, feeling for 20 minutes. And then that would somewhat put me to sleep. Started having a sleeping problem, so I went to pills. Uh, it, it was just, it was very not good. Yeah. At all. Um, so I was hurting, I was hurting a lot. And, but yeah, I was supposedly a good kid. I was popular in school. I had all the friends, not really. But, and it got, it got me nowhere. Um, and during those, the, that time period of what I was talking about, since 2005, and this is all the way till 2010, I would visit what was called Remnant Fellowship with my mom. And I would come down here and get filled up. But I couldn't, I, I didn't understand it. I felt convicted, but I still didn't understand it. And I'd even have friends back home that would say, oh, we're looking for churches. Well, hey, you need to check out the church my mom goes to. It seems like something's happening there. Something's going on. It seems like growth is happening. And, but it still wasn't for me. Um, but I'll never forget it. In 2010, December, I got to see Hosanna Symphony. And what I got to see out of that was the true focus of what I was focusing on, which was pleasing myself, which was also pleasing Satan. And that scared me. 
I didn't want anything to do with that. And I knew that it just made so much sense to me after hearing that. And so after that, I told my mom and said, hey, I need to move down there. I need to move quick. And uh, so I remember talking to Ted and it was always, I think the only thing that was still catching me up was the golf and what I was doing. I didn't want to leave anybody. And I'll never forget talking with you in your guys' house and they, you said, they'll just, they'll find another golfer. <laughs> and that was, easy. that was enough. That's all I needed to hear. I was in, I was all in. I packed up my car, moved down and got to stay with many families that were willing to bring me in, a stranger from Ohio that only had one focus was to come down here and to, to search God and everything. And I knew that this place, Remnant Fellowship and Way Down Ministries, was the only place that would give me those answers. And finally, I found it. I moved down here and just been you know, down here ever since and going all in with looking inward. And that's how I feel with how I can feel that the growth is happening. I feel like the momentum is happening in our family. We can work together and talking about things. Um, finances, whatever. Um, and through that, all that testimony, I had no weight problem. I was always a, what we call a skinny eater. Um, had, to, had no weight problem. And, uh, and just recently, uh, last year, I, I saw a picture of me playing golf and there was um, a little belly there. I've never, I've never seen that before. <laughs> and, uh, and that's... Uh, <laughs> And uh, that's what convicted me. And I looked to Lacey and I said, I, I got some weight to lose, don't I? And she said, you might. So, and very sweet and loving as she always is. And, and so, then, so then now that was, I think, 175 and now I'm 155. Wow. wow. So, so all awesome. praise to God. Amazing. I mean, I'm just on the edge of my seat. I mean, I just love this. And then you met Lacey, got married, and then... And I met Lacey. Yeah, sorry to end it all. I'm not angry. I don't procrastinate. I'm not lazy. I'm, I'm still, I'm sure I got some of that to work on. But with, I had no answers to coming now. Now I have all the answers and then it allowed me to, to find Lacey that I never thought I would ever have a, a wife. And now a daughter that- And now a daughter. That I, I say she looks like both of you, but you definitely see, <laughs> you know, daddy in, in Giselle too, and uh, beautiful. I mean, just, it's, it's all so beautiful. And then, okay, so Lacey, tell us your story. Um, well, mine actually starts with my mom. She had done way down right after she had my sister Madison, and um, she had lost about 60 pounds and kept it off for 10 years and got pregnant with Hartley. And the weight had come back, and it was the first time that uh, that had happened. And so when she had uh, done the Bible study again to lose weight through way down, she needed, there wasn't anyone in our area that was hosting classes, so she needed two or three people to do it with her so she could host. And so myself and my sister um, and our aunts, they joined in. And um, so my mom again lost all the weight. I lost about 39 pounds then, and my sister had lost uh, 29. And it was, the first time that I had seen someone, which was you in that video, have a relationship with God through everything that you did. And watching you, it was, um, when we had moved to Texas, I was 14. And there was a period of time where God did not allow me to really connect with anyone there. And I just remember it was every night I'd go an hour long walk and I just pray that he'd give me one friend that just wanted to love him with it, their all. And, um, so when I would see those videos, I'd see you, I'd see your children, and I'd just see the, even the children in the videos when they'd mm. worship in the songs. My mom would pause and she'd be like, you can't fake that, because we worked in the children ministries and you can't get those kids to fake or to even raise their hands if they don't feel like it. And you would just see the joy in those children, and Gracie, your granddaughter, and all of them, you would just see God coming out through them. And um, in 2009, 
my mom for her birthday, we were doing a month long road trip and all she wanted for her birthday was to be able to stop in at your guys' church and be able to say hi to you. And um, so that was, it was very sweet that my dad got, gave that to her as her birthday present. I was gonna say that was a birthday present for me. I didn't know it at the time when I met her, but uh, that would turn out to be for me. It, so. We, it, it, was, it was so amazing, we, we came in, we got to hear so many testimonies that night, um, and we're, we had, my mom had a gift for you, and they're like, well, do you want to give it to her yourself? And we're like, you can do that, because at our old mega church in Texas, the guy had written one book, and so he had three bodyguards around him, so you couldn't say <laughs> hi. <laughs> and so when they said, you can talk to Gwen Shamblin, and just how down to earth and how sweet and full of love you and we saw Elizabeth and you guys took pictures with us and it just instantly felt like family. And um, we got to go out with the Radabaws afterwards for dinner and uh, see their children and uh, oh, it yeah. was so, it was amazing. It was phenomenal to see a group of children outside of church and all they wanted to talk about was God and how God was everything in their life, in school, in their friendships, in their relationships with their parents. And it was immediately, within minutes of talking to them, I was like, this is what I've been praying for. That's what you've been praying for all the last time. three years. Yeah. And you found people that yes. want to talk about God mm -hmm. after, it isn't fake, it's real that God is their everything. And it's what you wanted, what, you know. And I hungered for it. It was, I, I remember crying because I was just like, I just, I just wanted I someone remember, to relate to that. I remember crying for it, really crying for it. You know, I remember. Now, you know, I want to tag this whole TV show with what uh, your father was saying before this all started. But this whole thing is, here you are, and you could have gone anywhere. I mean, both of y'all could have gone anywhere, and yet you came, and you were not ashamed to say, I came because of my mother. I came because of my mother, my father. I mean, you're here, and you're hanging out. I see you hanging out with your family all the time, and my kids are hanging out all the time. Your kids are hanging out all the time. Why? are you doing that? Why? Tell the world, why would you? Because these parents, the kids scatter. They have children and the children, you know, just dissipate, disappear, and they come home at Christmas or a couple of times a year. But I can't imagine not being around. I mean, my parents are my best friends, my siblings. We're all so close. We all, in fact, Jay's parents, his siblings, we're all in the same neighborhood. We're within two but to three minutes. But families fight in the yeah. world. They, 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 they come together at, at, on Turkey Day, but I hear it all the time. Mm -hmm. They are not, you know, why, why, I don't understand maybe coming, why are you hanging around? Why you're it's saying the love best that friends? You've taught. Yeah, you okay? So love, it, you you've taught us how to love God with our all, and when you're doing that, there's no selfish motives, there's no backstabbing, there's no bitterness. There you go. And jealousy. From you teaching us that, that's why our family's so unified. And and when everyone's focus and love is for God, it's. I mean, even in our family, outside of our family, it's grown to so many extended family just because this whole church is our family. You all are our family, and we Everybody love being together every Everybody in here is my brother and my sister. We're all brothers and sisters in here. But, um, and, and so, Jay, you were talking earlier before the show, it's a place where you're, you want the bar raised. I mean, you're an athlete. You're still at the top of the Vanderbilt scores here in town with all your golf. But, so you're, down, you're competitive, but you, you're saying that you want spiritually a place that's always convicting you. Amen, yeah, exactly, that's why I'm here. Um, I've, you've been to many churches, I've been to many churches. We have never heard any of the words that you speak of and actually show us, showing us in scripture that it actually means. I mean, I, 
half those I didn't even know existed. Um, and like you said, I am competitive. I am competitive for God. And this is the place that I know is going to get me, get to my goals. I'm being pure and laying down my sins. And I know I'm not gonna go to a golf course or a you know, basketball hoop or wherever, that's not gonna convict me. If I come here every Wednesday night, if I come here every Sabbath, because I want to, I knew I'm gonna learn something that's gonna get me closer to God. And that's, that's everything. And why our family is here is because of the same thing. We are one unit, we are together, we're helping you know, with kids, we're helping with you know, errands, we're helping with, with anything. And, and just the love, it's just, I have to say it, but just what, what we got to see in DO and seeing Michael and Elizabeth up there supporting you and just sharing everything that they've been through that we could, we could feel that love. And that's what is starting to happen in our family is just all this love is being passed down to you know, the kids that are getting married, the kids that are under us. And it's just, we all want to be together. We all want to be closer. We all, we want that. There is no backstabbing. There is no jealousy. There is no um, you know, anger. It's just all about helping us through our tests to please God. So do you, I hope that people that are watching this can, can grasp a, a little bit of it. But for this to happen, there has to be an incredible transformation because the world is grabbing for themselves. The world has to take care of themselves. And there has to be jealousy because you, and you have to compare and you have to backstab and you have to do all those things that are there, you may smile on the outside, but the inside is full of dead men's bones and hypocrisy because you have to take care of yourself and no one else is gonna do it for you. When you finally, because what have, what ha, why are people here, why are they all in? Because everyone's suffering. There's a great deal of suffering. There's suffering uh, that continues even when you come into the church. It's not the end of suffering. Suffering is this beautiful principle that is used as a dynamic for disciplining, training, and growing us up so that we are, whether we have certain skills and certain personality and characteristics for eternity. So we're headed for eternity. Everyone's headed for some type of eternity. We want to be in the one where you're able to get in the doors, you're a shoe in for, you know, getting hired, so to speak, into the kingdom of love. You know, if we're talking about the kingdom of hate, then there's a lot of people that have put a lot of practice into that too. And, and they may be practicing on that end. But this suffering that's from God is a beautiful thing. Now, you can either go with this suffering and you can become and do what the world does, even inside here. There are people from time to time, you'll, you'll see that there'll be people, because we, I, you know, I get to see the guidance and, and the, what's going on. I, I, you don't want, you, you need to know as a shepherd what the problems are. So the, I will see that the problems are that people have even taken a message like this and can sit inside here and turn out to be that they are, um, instead of, changing on the inside and getting this opportunity, this one blink of time to get yourself right, they are using it to project and to project onto me, onto this leadership, onto, you know, whatever is they say not going on. Whereas everyone else is seeing it as the, the opposite. But you, you, you will have people from time to time that, like you said earlier, I didn't get it at first. I didn't get it. But then he got it. What did he get? What did he get? Is that it's not about us. So much of this life you think is about you. And it's not about you, even though you will be taken care of. But you've got to understand that there's something much greater. We are temporary beings. There's something much more important for us to keep alive and to promote, and that is God and his glory. And when it's 
all about you, then you're miserable all the time. But if you go in and you realize this in this life, it is about our glorious God and we have this one chance to go in there and you make a choice. Now, this all in stuff that you did, you go back and listen to this and plug this in yourself. Jay told you his story, all the things that were going on, the other kids were jaded, they call themselves friends but they're not friends, people are asking him to church but it, it's still hip, hypocrisy inside. And uh, yeah, there are people that will even talk about the same words. I mean, my stuff's free, has been, been around for 30 years and I, I see exact pages lifted and hear sermons with exact words. But people can say words all day long, but if they're not living it, if that preacher is not living it, they're just lifting a sermon and stealing words. I mean, that is, it, it's an empty thing and the spirit of God's not in that place. So the people don't change. And so hypocrisy's still there. So if hypocrisy is there, then it's, it's not moving, it's empty. And it really, it really jades you for religion at all. Okay, but if you find what people are talking about, it's not, it's not that we feel arrogant about it. We feel very humble. We were talking about before church started, I can't believe that we've actually found a genuine place mm -hmm. where the people, and I can't make this happen. I'm just a conduit. I'm just like one of. I am just one of. Had it not been the next person, the next person, the next person who put it into practice, do you think this place would be, it'd be empty or it'd be full of dead men's bones? I mean, so, I mean, it'd be just one big coffin. It would be no different than anything else. But it was truly someone who takes it and puts it into practice, okay? So all the people out there, they're still just, like feeling sorry for themselves. They suffer and instead of that pain, taking them to this transformed state and an all-in state, that pain of the suffering, which is their own purpose by God, led by God, just a shoe fitted for your foot, your suffering, and it was to take the pain and the pain was to get you to go all in instead of you to get all self-focused and feeling sorry for yourself and crying for yourself and weeping. And I'm not saying, you need a helping hand. You need, you need to share your burdens. You need to, you know, let us know what's going on. And people do, people do. But you've got, you, you can either take suffering and, and project it out or you, and, and, and then you go nowhere with a transformation. But if you will look at what Jay did with the suffering, he's feeling empty. He's feeling, you know, you were feeling empty. You kept praying. Um, you saw hypocrisy, but you kept praying. Jay, listen, he, he, mothers say go to church all the time, but he, it clicked. He heard it in Hosanna and then goes, oh my goodness, there's a purpose that's beyond me, a purpose beyond you, all in is simply another means for a purpose that is beyond yourself. If you are so into yourself, I'm telling you, if you save your life and you keep saving yourself and you keep licking your wounds and feeling sorry and taking this God-given suffering and making God feel horrible about it, it's like a child who gets, has to go to time out and then punishes the parent for it and doesn't forgive them and you know, when they correct them and controls. If you wanna stay the controller and you think you're gonna stop God from giving you this needed suffering, you know, then, and, and you wanna pout, then it's, it, you are literally, you are saving your life. You're gonna lose the opportunity for all in. But if you will, if you will lose your life, lose it, lose 
your ambition, lose your, I want to eat that when I want to eat that. I want to, you know, here's the, your, your, your second pregnancy, you're down another 20 pounds. You, you've lost all your weight, then you had a baby, then you lost your weight, and then, you know, um, here you are at the perfect weight. But you, this is not just happening because, oh, they're just lucky and I'm cursed and that's why I'm struggling with this weight. And, you know, we have all kind of things going through our head at five o'clock at night. And, and we're, we're saying all kind of things. We're saying things like, you know, I, I get up in the morning and I'm gonna wait, you know, for hunger. I'm gonna wait. But then, then the next thing you know, you're not waiting. Why are you not waiting for your stomach to growl? Why are you not, why are you becoming your own God again? Um, you may wait, you know, uh, you're not hungry, but you go, well, it's lunch, I'll just eat it now, and, I, and, I, and, and then and I, I won't eat tonight. Or it's dinner and you're not hungry, but you go, well, you know, I'm gonna stay up late, and so it, I, I, if I eat late, it'll, I mean, it, I'll get sleepy, so let me just go on and make a decision now. Do you understand what you're doing? You're giving yourself this excuse. You're telling yourself, I'm going to not fool around with, with obedience to God and waiting, and I'm going to feed myself, and you are not all in. You are not choosing, you're not choosing this obedience to God, and you're, you're you're feeling sorry for yourself. And um, so then you say, because you look up the next day and you've gained weight, and then you go, why can't this just be easy? You know, why can't, you know, I've just got, I don't wanna fight one more battle. And you, and the more you try to, you know, then other things, you feel like you gotta work on this, you gotta work on that. I can't work on everything at the same time, and this is just all too much. Everybody, we've been in council for a long time. We know personalities like that. And here's the problem, is that until you finally say enough already, enough already, I'm giving myself all these excuses. I'm giving myself, I'm feeling sorry for myself. I, I, you know, my suffering's worse, my situation's you know, more difficult. You're bummed, but you're looking at you're looking at it all the wrong way. You're lucky. You're so we're so lucky. We're so we've got so much. And the people that make these choices, they chose to be all in. And you too can choose to be all in. You don't have to wake up tomorrow bummed, but you do have to stop feeling sorry for yourself and see that you have been given the most golden opportunity to be with people. And Jay, you said moving down here, I gotta move down here. I've got to be around. It there it does you can be around, but you need if you're not lo locally around, you need to be in the middle of the membership, in the middle of that membership board, in the middle of the Facebook, in the middle of these classes, mm -hmm. all these all in opportunities mm -hmm. that do you if you want it, you can have it tonight. You can have it by choice. You can have end the feeling sorry, end of feeling like you can't do it, end of listening to the lies, because all of those are lies. You eating when you were not hungry, absolutely no more. You know, this is gonna be used powerfully this show today. So thank you for everything you just shared. That was 
And Unbelievable. there's even people out there that are visiting and still doing way down and kind of they're visiting Remnant really intensely. Like we've got WhatsApp groups with like a couple in Africa, a couple in Australia, and we're like WhatsApping each other every day and different people are, are they're meeting different people and they're getting in the middle. But the most incredible thing was after Desert Oasis, everybody wanted to go all in after Desert Oasis. So August is all in. You can go on the Way Down Facebook page, on the Way Down page, and there is a daily calendar, like it is day you know, 10, it's day 11, it's day 12. And people are posting like, boom, 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 I'm down this, I'm down this, I'm down this. You'll see that every day with the day. Today's day 10. And people are literally, one woman lost 10 pounds last week. And that oh, was- Oh, my phone's filling up. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah. people are, have you made the choice to do this? Mm-hmm. I mean, it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Awesome. And they're getting, your, they're getting your tweets. They're getting your tweets at the same time, which is keeping them fed. And then of course, okay, so you're an all access member. So one of the things that Gwen wanted is to make sure that everybody had a, the power of local, had the, that feel of that local class whether it's online with everybody in your area, you know, online with everybody in Illinois, and then you meet physically once a week if you're all scattered, or, you know, and Gwen always said, it's, it's one from a city, it's two from a, you know, it's two from a country. So maybe there's not a hundred people doing a class, but we will get you in a local class. So we have a pre-registration form up on waydown.com. You have to be an all access member so you can have access to the videos and access to your workbooks. But when you go on waydown.com, It'll take you to this page, which is the, if you go, what he's showing you right there in that red arrow is the navigation bar. You click on classes and then you go to your class page. And when you go on there, it, you click on there. Okay, click. Okay, so there you are. You, you go in there and you can pre-register for a class and it'll show Illinois. It'll show, um, you just put in, you fill in your stuff right there and that'll shoot it to way down and way down will then connect you with your local coordinator. And I mean, there is Australia, there is California, there is London, there is Illinois, there is Ohio, there is Florida, there is um, Missouri, there's Kansas, there's, I mean, there is local classes going around. And if you live two hours away, don't worry, you guys can still do your class together through all access and then meet once, once a month at Starbucks and you know, or exactly. wherever, McDonald's for Diet Coke, and you just talk. So Gwen really wanted you to feel that power of that local fellowship. But like Gwen was saying, it is a choice. Mm-hmm. It is a choice and the demonic warfare will come against you. Yes. Someone will say, oh, don't drive on that day. Well, you need to help me clean out the garage. Well, don't do that. Well, don't go see them. Well, don't, okay, just push through it and go. And just go and meet these saints in your area and get yourself. But I know Gwen's talked about how powerful that Facebook group is how powerful the tweets are, how powerful webcasting. And then, so in September is when these classes are gonna start. We're gonna start after Labor Day. We're gonna do orientation. There's also gonna be online classes. They're, no, they're not gonna be on Facebook. People want it private. So they're gonna move into these private, a private chat room on, way to, on the Way Down site. So you can join an online class on Monday night or Tuesday night, or you can get into local classes that are going on all around the country. And then what we're gonna do is from September till Christmas, you can take two classes. So you can do a six week and an eight week or an eight week and a six week. So if you wanna do breakthrough, then you wanna do basics. You wanna do basics, then basics. It'll take you all the way through. You start your days of awe and then you go right into your September classes. And if you're youth, you're following along, you're doing the youth can overcome. You're doing the RF next. You're following along right with your parents, reading the love book. You're doing your TLE class. They're gonna start some children, some classes for kids. Not kids, when I say kids, I mean youth, like 20s, 18s, 15s, 14s, all that. And they're, you're gonna do the, we're gonna do these two classes together. And as you go through the fall, you're gonna be going through the days of awe. You're gonna, you can come on that October, come visit here if you need to. Whatever you need to do to get to heaven, Let's just do it. Like whatever I mean, we goodness. need to do to glorify this glorious God. Yes. Isn't it time yes. to glorify something other than ourselves? I'm so ready. Yes. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am honored to be up here 
with this age group wanting to glorify God and not themselves. And they've chosen to be in the middle of the pack. And I am, I am, I'm telling you, everybody, why does the class matter? Why does all this matter? And I want to thank you personally, all these people that are teaching these classes. Unbelievable the sacrifice. Everybody's going into organizing all this, all the tech. You've got all, all of the, the, the marketing media, all of the stuff that's going on at Way Down, and then all the regional reps. You would not believe the number of people involved. But thank you to all the Facebook people. Thank you to all these people that continue to reach out. But all of this is provided, and this, this trying to get in the middle, it matters. Why does it matter? Because when you get under those satanic attacks, when you start feeling sorry for yourself, this stuff makes you flip it. And it's time. It is so time for us to go all in. All Amen. in. Dance cause they're free Happy sing for eternity With our God and His Son Jesus Everything is peaceful and lightness Happy always doing His will Happy always doing